On the 1st of November 2003, Blackpool teenager, Charlene Downs aged 14, goes missing, never to be seen again. The police believe Charlene was murdered. This is her untold story. The Downs family moved to Blackpool in 1999 from Walsall. The family fled, after the local social services threatened to have Karen and Bob Downs prosecuted for willful neglect and endangerment of their children. Social services are considering taking the children into care. Karen and Bob leave town. There had been numerous allegations that the Downs had exposed their children to a number of paedophiles over the years. The social services warn Bob about a convicted paedophile called Brian Mokes, visiting his home and taking his daughter out in his car. Bob does nothing to protect his child. It's believed Mokes continues visiting the house and continued having access to the child. In 1998, when Charlene was aged nine, she and another girl alleged that they were being sexually abused by a man, trusted by her parents to take them to school. It's believed the family was aware of the abuse and didn't attempt to stop it. In 1999, the family arrived in Blackpool. The abuse still continues. Bob's drinking and behavior spirals out of control. He brings various men home from the pubs and clubs. Some of these men are only visiting the house in order to gain access to Charlene and her siblings. The family openly allowed these men to sexually abuse their children. All of the dance children have made allegations of abuse at the hands of family friends and from their parents. Leaked social services reports have revealed the history of abuse taking place in the dance household over the years. Charlene would roam the streets, uncared for and unloved. She became a victim of a grooming gang operating from various fast food outlets in Blackpool and surrounding areas, often having no choice but to exchange sexual favors for money or food. The Downs family were fully aware that Charlene was visiting the alleyways to exchange sexual favors for money. They never intervened or attempted to protect her. Shortly before Charlene vanished, a man named Raymond Monroe, who was a good friend of the family, moved into the house. He confesses to Karen Downs that he was due in court for the sexual abuse of two very young children. He is allowed to continue living at the Downs family home, with full access to Charlene and her sibling. An allegation is made by a child visiting the Downs family home. The child claims that Raymond had tried to touch her. Karen and Bob were made aware of the incident. Raymond Monroe was still allowed to stay at the home. The police caught Charlene walking hand in hand with Raymond, they return her home and warn the family about him. The Downs still continued to allow him to stay in the house. The Downs family wait three days to report Charlene missing. This was due to them having Raymond Monroe living at the house. Karen and Bob have since claimed that they did not know about Raymond Monroe's past history. This is a blatant lie and push to cover up to the public their own failings and direct involvement in the abuse of their own daughter. Karen Downs has admitted to the police, Raymond Monroe had told her, and other family members about his upcoming court case, for the sexual abuse of two children. On the day of Charlene's disappearance, another family friend and paedophile named Ronald Fraser, was known to have paid Charlene a sum of money. He had met her on previous occasions also giving her large amounts of money. The Downs family hid this man's identity from the police for over a year, willfully misleading the police investigation into their own daughter's disappearance. Even to this day, the Downs family continue to lie to the public about the abuse that took place inside their home. Another family friend Taffy who was in his forties, confesses to Karen Downs he is in love with her young daughter Charlene. Karen and Bob continued to allow him to visit the house. Taffy admitted to the police that he had also been paying Charlene money to sexually abuse her. He now claims the police used force to gain a confession. He makes a formal complaint about his treatment at the hands of the police. He is another man who has never faced any charges for the sexual abuse of Charlene. Karen Downs still remains friends with him on Facebook. The Downs family have repeatedly lied to the police investigation, which led the police to consider charging Karen Downs with perverting the course of justice, for lying about the last time she saw Charlene alive. It is alleged a paedophile ring was operating from the Downs family home. In 2007, a criminal trial took place, it was alleged that Charlene Downs was killed by two kebab shop owners, who later disposed of her body in a mincer, turning her into a kebab. Lacking concrete proof of murder, 
the prosecution was built on hearsay evidence, from an unreliable witness and on a police officer's transcription of low-quality recordings, from bugs placed in the flattened car of one of the suspects. Its accuracy was repeatedly challenged by the defense. On the eve of a scheduled 2008 retrial, after the first hearing led to a hung jury, the case collapsed. Both defendants were acquitted. The last known witness to see Charlene Downs alive was a convicted pedophile, Nigel Lloyd. He remains the prime suspect in the case. Charlene was groomed and sexually abused, down the alleyways. She was groomed and sexually abused, in her own home. No matter which way Charlene turned, she faced some form of abuse, which was hidden from the outside world by the very people who should have been protecting her. Charlene Downs was failed, by all those whose duty it was to protect her. Still to this day nobody has been held accountable. We fully support a public inquiry. Justice for Charlene Downs.